Segment 13, the electromagnetic spectrum. Before we get to the fancy slides, I want to talk about a couple different questions that come up in this discussion. One is why our eyes use the visual part of the spectrum. There, there are several reasons for this. The main one is that the atmosphere transmits light in visual wavelengths, so sunlight reaches the surface of the Earth and makes it bright so that we can actually see things. In ancient times, in particular among the Egyptians, there was this idea of light originating in the eyes and illuminating scenes that we could see. And we've seen this concept in uh, Superman movies occasionally when the bad guys send x-rays out from their eyes to zap things. But in fact, this is not the case. Light from luminous objects, the lamps or the sun, strikes, strikes other objects these objects absorb some of the light but reflect some of the light and our eye has a lens in it that bends that light back to to form an image on a sensor the retina in our eye that then is what our brain interprets to paint the scene that we're in fact seeing the colors of objects come about in different ways depending upon whether the objects are self-luminous that is generating the light themselves or reflecting in a self-luminous object the color reflects the balance of of uh, photons at the red end of the spectrum or the blue end of the spectrum the red being the long wavelength end and the blue being the short wavelength end that are emitted by the object so when you see a red light for example the red light is sending out more red photons than blue photons and it looks red for most of the objects we see are not self-luminous. For example, when you look at your neighbor and they have a blue shirt on, the lights in the room are emitting white light. White light is the sum of, of all the colors in the spectrum. But the shirt, the blue shirt, is absorbing the red photons and only reflecting the blue ones. And so the shirt looks blue to you. If someone had a red shirt on, then it would be absorbing the blue photons, reflecting the red ones, and it would look red to you. Um, another thing about Superman was back in the day one of his favorite tricks was to look into a bank vault and see that there were criminals inside or be able to spot things through walls with his x-ray vision but but this is rather improbable for a number of reasons first of all the the scene is in general dark because while the Sun emits x-rays as we'll see these x-rays are absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere so there's very few photons available and uh, second, that when you try to look at transparent objects, they're not reflecting. It's only the very low energy x-rays that scatter off of objects very easily and will allow you to form an image. So these machines that everybody curses in the, in the uh, airports that look at you through your clothes are, are uh, using x-rays that do reflect off of you. But most x-rays at, at, at higher energies transmit through flesh and, and, and are absorbed by bones and so they're not reflecting anywhere and even if Superman were standing here with a dental x-ray machine shining it through the wall he wouldn't be able to see the people. The electromagnetic spectrum encompasses most of the types of radiation that we've heard about over the, the course of our lives and, and this is all electromagnetic radiation what, what we generally call light when we talk about the light we can see we generally refer to that as visible light and in this plot you're seeing here you have the names of the different types of radiation along the bottom above that you have the wavelength of that light in meters and blown up at the top you're showing the visible part of the spectrum the visible part of the spectrum is only about a factor of two but what you see displayed uh, underneath is about a factor of 10 to the 16th so the visible spectrum is just a tiny tiny slice of the total electromagnetic spectrum going from very very short wavelengths very high energy photons in the gamma rays to somewhat longer wavelengths and somewhat lower energy in x-rays then ultraviolet then the visible light we see and then at longer wavelengths infrared light and then microwaves and radio in the different bands are shown here um, here's just another another realization of that giving you some idea of the size scale of the wavelengths by showing you obje common objects or known objects that have similar size scales in this in this plot 
also you'll see down at the bottom a an illustration a graph showing you something about the opacity of the atmosphere that is where the atmosphere blocks the light and where the atmosphere lets the light through and what you find is that the visible part of the spectrum at, at just uh, at shorter wavelengths than one micron the atmosphere is very transparent and then it's also transparent in, in at radio wavelengths but at most other wavelengths the atmosphere either absorbs or reflects light this is another illustration of atmospheric transmission showing you what's going on where we have the high energy short wavelengths on the left and the low energy long wavelengths on the right so in, in, in the radio part of the spectrum, let's start from the right and go to the left. In the, in the sh longest wavelength radio part of the spectrum, there's a layer of ions in the upper atmosphere that are generated by the sun. And these ions reflect radio signals. That reflection is what allows AM radio to transmit over the horizon to, to send signals to places that can't be seen along the line of sight. This, in fact, is the reason why AM stations have to go off the air at night, because in the daytime, the sun ionizes the atmosphere to lower down, the ultraviolet light from the sun, and the reflection happens at a lower altitude. And so the reach of reflected radio signals is smaller. At night, as the lower part of this layer disappears and rises to higher positions in the atmosphere, the reflections can carry further, and you get this cacophony of radio stations all trying to broadcast on the same wavelength band unless some of the radio stations shut down. As you go into the FM radio range, where um, not only FM radio, but also um, signals from, from cell phones are, are mostly sent, your signals are transmitted by the atmosphere and so in fact they can only go along the line of sight because they don't have anything they can bounce off of. As you go to shorter wavelengths mostly water vapor but other molecules as well in the Earth's atmosphere absorb the radiation and they prevent signals from transmitting very far so we can't see objects outside the atmosphere at these wavelengths and we can't really send signals through the atmosphere at these wavelengths. Moving into the visual part of the spectrum, the atmosphere is quite transparent. Light transmits extremely well. We don't actually see the air. The, and the air is, unless you're in Beijing at the, at the moment, the air is not blocking much of the signal. And there, in fact, it's not the air itself, but the dust particles in the air that are doing the blocking. Shortward of the visible range, rising very sharply, um, molecules are again absorbing the light. And this prevents ultraviolet light from reaching the ground. This is extremely important to the existence of life on Earth as ul ultraviolet light has sufficient energy to break the chemical bonds that hold molecules together, particularly biologically active molecules, and if copious amounts of, of ultraviolet light were reaching the ground, it would be very hard for life to form and evolve. Understanding the nature of light started already in the 17th century and Newton again, the great genius that he was, published a series of experiments on breaking up of sunlight by prisms. Here you see Sir Isaac standing by a small hole in the wall as the sun comes in and with his prism he's breaking it up into the uh, colors of the rainbow, so splitting up this white light into the individual colors. A spectrograph, which is one of the most common tools in astronomy, breaks up the light into the individual colors and allows us to get most of the information we ultimately get from space. We've actually only visited a very few bodies outside of the Earth, the Moon, Mars with our, our uh, uh, rover spacecraft, Venus, and a few asteroids. But apart from that, the information we get from space, with a very few exceptions, comes to us by interpreting the light that comes from the objects. And in order to really understand that light, we have to break it up into its individual colors and use the information in, that's embedded in the brightness of different parts of the spectrum relative to each other to be able to understand what's going on in these objects.